Hello, I'm Lindsey Whitley, the Associate Superintendent for Communications and Community Engagement with Cumberland County Schools. Thank you so much for joining us for our Throwback Thursday edition of Cumberland Family Academy. Each week, we look forward to bringing you timely information and resources to help you help your child succeed in school and in life. Now, let's jump right into tonight's session, already in progress. executive director of technology here in the school system I want to start out by saying it's a real it's a real honor to be able to present with you tonight I know this series is uh, you are the parents that care so much about your your children for you to take time to log on to learn about uh, the internet safety um, it, it shows you really do care and we appreciate your involvement we appreciate everything you do to help help our children your child our, our children as well be successful so I, I want to just thank you. I think we'll start off tonight with, uh, let's see. We're going to just work, go through some guidelines. Please place your computer on mute during the workshop. When you came in, you were muted. Just If you could just keep it muted. Please sign in by placing your name on the school with your child tens and questions placed in the chat box will be answered at the end of the workshop. The purpose of our time together tonight is to provide practical information that practical information that you can use with your child. We want to present safety tips for internet use and provide useful re resources for you as a parent as you work to help keep your child safe online. I wanted to really start out by sharing these three pictures. This is my whole entire world. Her name is Lauren. And uh, I've been walking around the house for about a week getting ready, trying to get some, uh, some candid photos of her without her knowing. I did get busted on one of them. So told me to stop acting weird taking pictures. But this is my 12 year old. She goes to John Griffin. Oh, I guess I should back up. Oh, well, I'll tell you about her and then I'll tell you a little about me and then we'll go into our presentation. But this is my 12 year old. She goes to John Griffin Middle School here in Cumberland County and she's uh, the very best child in the world. And I know you would say that about yours, but uh, you can see her, she's, she's right there in the middle on that thing that she can't seem to get her face out of and i know you probably have one of those if you don't you will soon um she's over there in her bed i think she's in class right there doing virtual learning and, and so i think i walked <laughs> walked in and caught her uh, doing that i said girl get up and get on that desk but that's how she likes to be she's productive on the right hand side and then she's playing xbox on the left and we'll talk a little bit about gaming because that is a form of social media really it is um, here in just a little bit. But I wanted to show you that just because I'm the director of technology, I got the same struggles you got because I'm trying to keep this little girl online and she knows everything. If you don't believe it, you ask her. You know, she knows everything there is to know and she don't think I know anything. I said, well, that's what I do every day, all day. And she was like, damn, you know, she don't, you know, she acts like I don't know anything and she knows everything. But that's what she's supposed to do. That's how her brain is wired. That's just how your child's brain is wired. Um, she's the best. She's never made a B. She's good. We're a Christian family. We have good ethics. We do all the right things and, and she's never given us a day of, of trouble, but she is 12 years old and 12 year old, 12 years old, make bad decisions sometime. And they also are gullible and she don't even know she's gullible, just like yours. So I wanted to share my world and then I'm going to refer back to her from time to time. So I wanted to show, uh, show her. Let me take this opportunity to just give you a brief rundown of who I am. Um, I'm from Fayetteville. I, I went to Elizabeth Cashwell Elementary, Southview Junior High and Southview Senior High. And uh, so I am a product of Cumberland County Schools. I will retire from Cumberland County Schools. I'm all in. Uh, this is my livelihood. It's my passion. It's what I do. And I started out as a teacher. I taught fourth grade at Rockfish Elementary and Galberry Farm Elementary. Then I wanted to coach football and teach middle school. So I went to Mac Williams Middle School, coached football, taught sixth grade math. So I had elementary, middle school experience. I wanted to become an administrator, went back and got my master's and then became assistant principal at Bill Hefner Elementary. And then I become the principal at uh, Ponderosa Elementary. Then I was uh, able to become the principal at Lewis Chapel Middle School for several years. And then I come into this role. So even though I've bounced from here to there in Cumberland County, I've stayed in the same school system. So I've been around before there was computers in classrooms. And now 
the classroom is right there on the right hand side sitting in bed on a virtual uh, virtual class so that's who I am and I just wanted to let you know to give you a frame of reference I'm an educator but more importantly I'm a parent so I, when I refer back just keep Lauren's face in your mind Really talking about seven skills your child needs to be successful in the 21st century. And I always think it's funny when we say 21st century because we're well into the 21st century. But, you know, the ability to collaborate with others, uh, the ability to read and understand, you know, we've always been able to need to read and understand. Uh, comprehension is, is the, the goal, but, you know, it, and it has been since we were in school. But uh, really that collaboration with others, problem solving ability, global awareness, no longer are we competing for people that are here in Fayetteville, uh, for jobs here in Fayetteville, we're competing with people throughout the world. And so um, you've got to think globally. It's bigger than North Carolina. It's bigger than Cumberland County. It's global. Uh, that's a whole nother conversation. They need research skills, media literacy, and interpersonal skills. Now, that last one is a, uh, that's a big one, interpersonal skills, because I have seen I do a lot of interviews of people, a lot of talking with high school students, and interpersonal skills is something that we might be lacking a little bit. Uh, we have to be very mindful of that. Technology really helps with our uh, problem, our research skills, but sometimes it could hurt our interpersonal skills. So just make sure we know that these are what employers look like. If this is uh, what, we, what they look for, and um, technology can certainly help with that. It could also there's another side to it as well. So the value of technology, well, we can search and process information. We can do research, it helps with decision-making, it designs and develops product. And you can design and develop products. You can communicate freely. You can create lifelong learners. And that's what we use as parents every day, no matter where you work and what facet, your technology touches you somehow, whether you're using a cash register or you're a, a software developer, it, there's technology everywhere. If you're using a gas pump, there's technology there. But the value of technology helps make our life easier. How do students use the internet? How do they use it? They do it for homework. They go shopping. They do research, distance learning, sharing photos and videos. That's one we're going to talk about. They talk with friends. I used to, I used to say they download music. They don't even download music anymore. They just stream it off Spotify. Uh, they stream movies, they're playing games, they're chat rooms, they're reading, job searching, and so forth. This is what your children use. And so there's positives and there's negatives to that. Through the use of technology, children are able to travel the world without leaving their room. They can meet new people online. They can learn new things. They can share their thoughts with other people all over the world and their creations. So, like, how does that make you feel? Because when I was preparing this, and if I could unmute you, you there would be a, a, a conversation where that's great. All that stuff you I said was great. But it might put a little pit in the bottom of your stomach as well. It's like, I don't know how I feel about my child being able to communicate with people all over the world. Because not everybody's out for, for good. And so that might make you feel good. It might make you feel bad. Um, but it's our job as parents to make sure that we help these children navigate. Remember my 12-year-old, she's a good girl, but she's naive and she don't even know it. So it's my job to make sure she's safe and it's your job to help your child be safe. And that's hopefully what we'll get into tonight. First, we're going to talk about internet safety. Um, just some tips, really. This is through working with children in different levels. Remember elementary, middle, and now I'm able to work with high school children as well. I deal with children a lot here at school. But you have a lot more freedoms to do a lot more things at home than we do here at school. Um, we teach our children the value of, of stuff. We communicate with their children, but you really shape the child at home on the decisions they make. And it's never too early to start. If you think about young children now, at one point people say, my child's in first grade. I don't I have time. I don't have time. I don't have to worry about it right now. I have time. Fast forward to today. It, do we need to have first graders to be proficient with online resources? Absolutely, because that's how they're going to school. And whether we feel like that's right or wrong, that's another discussion. That's what we have to do in this time that we're quarantined. So it's never too early to start. Um, I'm not saying that a first grader needs to be on social media. I'm just saying it's never too early to communicate with their child about the dangers of the internet and the positive aspects. 
please use sound bites and not lectures. I have to learn this. My wife, my, my wife is my teacher on this one. Because I'll get in there and when stuff does go wrong and I start rah, 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 she'll say, mm -mm, sound bite. You lost her about two minutes in. I know you're ill. You need to calm that down. You need to start talking to her. But it doesn't have to be when they do something wrong. Just ask them a quick question. Hey, where are you going? Why do you like that app? Okay, thanks. And then move on. Uh, have you ever thought about doing this on that app? Uh, I would be careful not to do that instead of giving them lectures. That's something I've had to learn the hard way. And I'm still, I'm still learning that one because I'm long-winded with her. Too long-winded. And find teachable moments to share your thoughts and values. You know, teachable moments are things that our, the teachers in school always talk about, but we talk about it at home too. If you have a situation where something pops up um, and, and, you know, you find a little something and you, you can crowbar something in and, and really teach them something, take advantage of that. Look for those situations where things might have happened with technology you're not comfortable with or you are comfortable with, or you see somebody else, you watching something on TV and somebody has posted something online they didn't need to post and they've gotten in trouble. And you're watching TV and your child's over there drawing a picture or whatever. That's a teachable moment. Hey, check that out. Why do you think that person got in trouble for doing that? That's a teachable moment. So just take a look at that. And then listen, what is your child thinking? What is your child's concerns? Um, I have learned so much from my 12 year old. I told you I'm gonna keep going back to my 12 year old cause I'm getting my experience uh, with her. And, you know, really, you know, what are you thinking about that? How do you feel about that? And give her a chance to talk. It's a lot of times we're all busy doing our thing. We don't sit and we don't listen to our children. So please listen to them and ask their concerns. So getting started, we want to establish, establish rules and expectations before you get the technology. Now, this is something that we do in schools, and this is something that the research says is most important, is to establish a set of rules and discuss and agree on the rules and consequences. Now, they might not always agree with your rules, but it's your house. Unless they're paying rent or paying the mortgage, it's your house. That is your property. That is your child. So discuss with them uh, and agree on those rules and consequences. Help Let them help come up with consequences. If you do this, what do you think is a punishment? Well, you know, it, let them come up with it and you could lead them where you want to do. Set a good example. This is a big one. And we run into this. I, I get the, the, this is not a, a pleasure. There, I get to see all the bad stuff that happens. And, and I might have to contact parents myself about things that are going out on with the school system. And it's my job as the director of technology to monitor our technology, and make sure we're working. Um, but there's so many times that, that parents don't set good examples. They tell them to do the right thing, but then they do the wrong thing. They get online and put their whole life out there and then tell their child, don't do that. Well, I'm going to do what you do. Don't do as I say, do as I do. That's what they do. So keep lines of communication open. Again, don't shut them out. Listen to them. Let them talk to you. Put the computer in a high traffic area in your home. This might be a fight on your hands. This one might be an argument. I don't know. You hear the saying, like, I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to be your parent. And you might be mad at me today, but this is the way it's going to be, is put that computer out. My child doesn't have a computer in her, her bedroom. We let her take her laptop in to do uh, class now because that's a quiet place to do. And when she does her homework, we do that. But I'm going to share a little trick with you a little later on uh, that we, we make sure she's safe on there. So stay tuned for that one. Require a password to anything that your child does online. Don't let them set up anything and keep their pri their password private. We keep a little log of, and we got a couple little things that, that Lauren gets into, and we've got her password. And let me find out you change your, my, your password without us knowing. You have to get in there and log in from time to time. Require those passwords. Say no to anything that doesn't make you comfortable. Now, <clears throat> I mean, that's easy to say, sometimes hard to do, because there's things that they want to do. They want to push the limits. But... You can't veer away from saying no. You may not have that problem. I'll admit that I do. Sometimes everybody wants a child to be happy and everybody else's parents are doing something, uh, you know, letting their children do something. Don't be scared to say no. That is your property. It is your responsibility to keep them safe because they don't have the capability in their young mind. Their dendrites have not connected inside their brain yet, research says. So check often. Um, Log in, check in, make sure they're doing the right thing. Um, and just don't be scared to say no. And if they get mad, that's fine. 
let them get mad. They still love him. Let's talk about their cell phones. Oh man, I'm, I don't know. It's a different day with the cell phones. When I first started teaching school, there was no cell phones. As I progressed through my career, and I'm in my 23rd year with Cumberland County School. Um, and as I progressed into it, cell phones become a thing. It was a thing for adults that wanted to spend a lot of money. Then it become a thing for children that adults to spend a lot of money. And then they started popping up at school. And we would say, you can't have a cell phone in school. You can't do anything on that cell phone. If I see it, I'm taking it. You can pick it up at the end of the year. And it's like more cell phones come in. And I hate to say it, but we can't beat them. So we need to embrace them. Well, now cell phones are a great tool for schoolwork if they do the things the right way. At home, they're a great tool for communication and, and staying on top of uh, current events and making sure that they do research. And it's a good way, like I, my 12 year old has a phone. There's a lot of limits on that phone. And I'll tell you about those shortly too. But uh, the fact that I would send my child off somewhere without me being able to text her and check on her or track her on her GPS, it gives me the shakes now. And it's funny, I used to fight those cell phones and now that I have a child that's in that same situation, she, uh, she's a seventh grader and I taught sixth grade, but uh, I, I have to have that lifelong to her, lifeline to her too. So we all have to respect the rules of the cell phone. Texting. I'm not going to go through and spend a lot of time on this, but teens are, are, are they're sending 8% more text than they do this, this time last year. And so it's continuing to grow. American teenagers, they send... They send and receive, six, this is on average, 67 texts per day. That's 469 texts per week. That's 2,010 texts per month. And they are American teenagers send and receive 24,120 texts per year on average. That's, I can't believe that. But then I go to work and send texts all day long. My stuff is about earning a living and doing a job. I'm like, I don't have that many friends. I don't want to talk to that many people, but they do. She does. She's text all day long. Now, teens don't value face-to-face -face communications with their friends as much as they used to. You could see, now this was as of 2018, so it's a couple years old, but from 2012 to 2018, the in-person communication went from 49% to 32%. What a dip. You know, when me and my friends would get together and we would talk with each other, it was one of those things where like we would hang out and just be with each other and we would sleep over and we would go play basketball and we would, you know, go try to talk to girls and we, you know, we were just kids and we were doing it. Well, now there's so few less of those interpersonal reactions that that does help uh, mold a child for later on. Texting is on a rise. Um, social media is really on the rise and video chatting's on they do a lot of FaceTime. I'm like, why y'all FaceTiming? What do you, you just, you just saw her earlier. She's like, I don't know, dad, leave me alone. Like, I, you don't, you don't understand. You're right. I don't because why you got to look at them? Just text them or, or call them on the phone. I used to sit up all night on the phone. I know a lot of you did too, with your little boyfriends or girlfriends and sit up there and talk on the phone all night. Well, they just stay up and they text now on FaceTime. So. Let's talk about sexting. Now, that's a big deal. Sexting is when somebody sends sexually explicit photos, videos, or messages from a mobile phone. Make sure your child knows that this is illegal. You might have a young child and they haven't broached this yet, or you might have an older child that haven't broached it yet. Maybe you've done a good job sheltering them, but there are children out there that are doing. Remember, my job title, I have to keep children safe in school, so when we run across that, I have to deal with that, and I have to deal with the police, the cyber detectives for federal PD, and the Sheriff's Department of Cumberland County, um, we have to deal with the ugly side of technology a lot. And I'm telling you as parents, make sure your child knows it is illegal. These kids get, I don't know, it makes, I have to stop just a minute because I got a 12 year old and it makes me, you know, that's what gives me like, I might take his jacket off in a second when we keep talking about it. But if they send images or messages of a sexual nature, they risk their reputation and friendships. But it's also a child, it's a felony because if my 12 year old, I can't talk about my 12 year old, let's talk about a, uh, another 12 year old were to send pictures of herself to a little boy cause she's in love cause they think they're in love and there ain't no such thing as love that early on. But you, you remember you, you were in love and you send a little picture cause that little boy asked or that little girl asked from a little boy. 
and you send that picture for a 12 year old, that is trafficking child pornography. And if you want to talk about a serious offense, that is a serious offense. So drill that home to them. Don't ever, 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 ever send any video text or any kind of like sexual, you know, verbiage, anything, because that little boy or that little girl you think you're in love with, they don't love you. They got friends. And y'all gonna break up. And when you do, guess what doesn't go away? That picture or that message or that video. And that little boy or that little girl is gonna show all their little boy or girl friends and it's not gonna be good for you. Whether you don't get in trouble with the law or not, you can lose a lot. So for detailed information, I have found that bradleyhospital.org is a wonderful place to go. It gives you talking points and um, it, it just really gives a lot of good information. So. Go to bradleyhospital.org and if you'd like to ask your child to visit a website to get information about texting that might be on their level, not your level, your level is bradleyhospital.org. Their level is that's not so, uh, that's not cool.com. It is, it is on a child level, but it's important information. Talk about cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is used to technology to threaten, harass, uh, embrace, or target another person. Have your child tell you when something happens online they don't like. It's your job to figure out if that's cyberbullying or not. Now, my child come home and she told me somebody was bullying her, cyberbullying, and kid was just being mean to him. You know, like every kid ain't always gonna get along, so everything's not bullying. Everything online is not bullying, but when you target somebody online and you continuously hit them with things that are trying to break them down instead of build them up, that is cyberbullying. And if they're not comfortable with it, they need to come and talk to you and you help them sort it out, whether that is bullying or that's just somebody need to cut out of their life. Um, block or don't, uh, do not respond to people that are bullying. You respond, you're throwing gas on the fire. Make sure your child knows to save the evidence if something they've sent on their phone or online account. Don't delete it. I'm uncomfortable with this, here's what it is. You're the adult, you make the decision what the next steps would be, but make sure they know to keep that evidence because there's a lot of times it'll come towards me and they'll say, well, can you call Verizon and get it back? No, I cannot because, you know, it doesn't just doesn't work like that. So make sure they keep that. Really recognize the sign of a child that's being bullied. If you notice your child showing signs of depression or anxiety, check their tech. And uh, kidshealth.com, great resource for you. Go to that kids, uh, kidshealth.com. We'll really spell it out for you as a parent. It's one of the places I love to go. Right now with every kid at home, at quarantine, they don't, I'm not seeing their friends. Sometimes technology is all they got right now because they're not at school. And I can see, I can tell you from my personal standpoint that I have seen my daughter with all the little friends and the longer they're, away from each other, the further they kind of spread apart. Um, really just keep an eye on your child. If they're, if they're looking like they're a little depressed or they're, they're starting to feel anxious about things or they're getting in a little scraps with their friends, you know, really just try to keep up with it. This, it's not a good time for kids or adults, but uh, make sure you just keep an eye on that. Oh yeah, social media. Now, I'm not gonna spend much time on this, but here's what I did with this activity. If I could enter, I was going, you know, if you know what these are, I was going to ask you which ones you knew what they are. So here's what I'm not, we're not going to go back and forth about it. But what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to look at these and I'm going to take 10 seconds for you to look at them and count on your fingers how many of these you know what they are. 10 seconds. All right. So if I ask you, if I hope you said at least six because everything on the left is for old people, all right? So you got Facebook, you got Twitter, Instagram's still on point with kids a little bit. Um, you, you know, you know Snapchat and uh, you know you know Pinterest, which whatever, and, and you know YouTube. Now, those on the left, like I said, that's for old people. That's the thing is when something comes up, Facebook used to be for young people, then we got on it and they shifted gears to something else. So the things on the left, you should have known. If you didn't know it, then, and, you know, um, you, sh you should, you know those on the left. The ones on the right are not as familiar. Now, there are way more than these six, but I didn't want to go through a whole list of things. My wife is a high school teacher. I'm going to be on, I got a 12 year old. And as I was preparing this slide, I said, all right, I said, give me some things I don't know about. 
you know, I mean, I know some of these. I know quite a few of these. There's a couple I don't know anything about. And, I, and I'll go through uh, through that with it. TikTok, that's the symbol on the, you know, the, the little music note, TikTok. Most of you probably know what TikTok is, funny videos and so forth, but there's a chat feature to it. Uh, if you look uh, to the right, that's OnlyFans. I didn't know anything about OnlyFans, but apparently you pay money towards people that are famous and you get to see more content. There's a lot of shady stuff out there for that. But a lot of times kids get sucked into it. They'll put a little money towards something and they're targeted. So that's one I didn't, I didn't know much about. Among Us, I've never heard of Among Us until my child told me about it. And uh, Among Us is the one in the middle on the third row over. And that's the gaming, that's a game that they play, but it's a hot and heavy chat section that goes along with that game. Uh, the one to the right is Twitch. Twitch is a social media centered around gaming, like Xbox gaming or computer gaming. Kids can log on and watch other kids do videos. Uh, I mean, what play games. I don't understand it, but I ain't supposed to because I'm an old man. And uh, these young kids, they love doing that. But again, it's a social media site. Now, my wife is a high school teacher. She texts with two or three of her uh, students and said, give me the one thing that people need to, parents need to look at that they don't know much about. This one's called Discord. That little one at the bottom that looks like a little crab, called Discord. They said, that is a no-go. That's, that, that's one that's very bad. And all it is is you get in groups with like, just like like, uh, you like things. If you're in the cats, you can get in a group and talk about cats. It's just like the other stuff. But there's a lot of things that happen in there that shouldn't be happening. It's not appropriate. And that last one that looks like a little dot on the map is Periscope. I'll give you a fast story, and I'm, and I'm, I'm not going to bore you with all these stories, but Periscope is one where basically you can start live streaming. If you log on to Periscope, it'll show you a map of your area, and it'll show you all the live streams that are happening. You click on that live stream, and you patch into that live stream. How do I know about Periscope? Because I blocked it from our school system, and anybody that tries to get around our filters, I block that. That is dangerous because... I was sitting here, somebody reported this Periscope thing. It was new at that point. I click on it. I look, I zero down to Andrews Road, north side of town, Pine Forest High School. I said, Darren, there's three different little icons on Pine Forest High School. I click on one of them. There's this little girl in the classroom, live streaming her teacher teaching. Teacher doesn't know she's live streaming. She's over here talking a lot of trash about her teacher, putting it out for the world to see. And there were like 75 people watching this live stream of this teacher with her back to this girl. And the teacher was doing a great job, but she was live streaming without the teacher knowing. Well, then I start digging in. And you can only imagine some of the things that were happening that people were live streaming out. And you could just click on and watch them do it. No, Periscope is terrible. Well, you might not use Periscope, but kids were using it at that point. There are 5,000 other things. The point of this is that we know of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. They don't use it that much. They'll use other things. There's more, there's, there's more popular things with the young kid. I just wanted to put five or six up here to show you. The point to this is, is stay on top of it. Do everything you can. Just because you don't see an Instagram account or a Facebook account don't mean they're not using social media. This is why you have to ask them. This is why you have to log in. And I'm going to give you another tip. I'm gonna, it's, it's a big finish. I'm going to show you how I stay on top of it as well. It's a tool for you to use. The most important point about social media, it's up to you when you feel like your child's ready to get it. My child's 12. I don't think she's old enough. That's Kevin's decision. I'm a parent. Uh, you may feel like 12-year-old is fine. All my, all my daughter's friends, I don't say all of them, a lot of my daughter's friends have Instagram. My daughter and I am her mother. You know, we, we're a happy family, but we argue and fuss. Why can't I have Instagram? Because it says so. Why? Why? Because you're too young. No, I'm not. My friends, I'm a good girl. I've never made a beat. Don't matter. You're gullible and don't even know you're gullible. You're supposed to make bad decisions. I'm going to make this one for you. We're not doing it. I'm stomp away and get mad. But that's okay. I'm her parent. I'm not really her friend. I am friends with her, but I'm her parent first. I love her more than anything, so I'm keeping her safe. I will talk about it, but uh, when she becomes a young teenager, we'll, we'll get her in there, but I'm going to watch everything she does, and I'm going to let her know I'm watching everything. Require your child to accept you as a friend or a follower. 
A lot of kids, they will sit there and they'll make something on the slick. They'll give you the parent version and they'll friend you and everything will be puppy dogs and rainbows. They could go in and make one without you knowing and um, that would be a problem. So your cell phone, your bill, you check it when you want to. Uh, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, if you choose uh, to let them friend people online, talk to them about online. There is no friends online. Uh, you know, you better know your friend in a physical world before you get be friends with somebody in a virtual world. All my Facebook friends, I may not know them, but they're friends of a friend. And if they got some shady stuff, I unfriend them. Um, sometimes they don't make those same decisions. Show a genuine interest in your child's online presence. Talk to them. No lectures, snapshots. We went through that. Check your child's privacy policy. Require them to keep their accounts private. Don't open it up to the world. Be that person when you open it up and you can only see one little picture, make sure they lock it down. And discuss with your child about not accepting people you don't know their social media accounts. They're out there and y'all know it. What's the best way for parents to monitor their children and make sure they're making good decisions? Here's the big payoff. It, here's a couple things I want you to, to go away with. If you don't know about this one, this is where I'm leading up to and then I'm getting ready to stop talking, but I want to share with you about Bark. Bark is a saving grace for me. Now it is $9 a month. If you can scrape up $9 a month, do it. But it's the best $9 you will spend if you've got a child that you are serious about keeping uh, safe online. It monitors their social media, it monitors their text, and monitors their email. It has screen time um, statistics for you. It has web filtering. This will allow you to, if you hear about Periscope and you don't want them to have Periscope, you can block Periscope. They can't download it from anywhere. Uh, if they're doing too much screen time, you can back away. It's $9 a month. And if you remember only, and I'm coming to a close, if you will remember only one thing tonight with our time together this evening, anything that is placed online will never go away. These children don't get it. I see it every day. I see young children. I see older children. They put themselves out there. They put their whole life out there. And I'm not, you know, they're putting it out there. And you better believe before I hire a technician, I dig into their social media. I want to know what kind of person they are. Are they ethical? Can I trust them around children in the school system? Can I trust them around a lot of equipment? What kind of people are they? If they put it out on Facebook, they put it out on Instagram, whatever they put it out on, colleges do look at that when they apply to college. They look at their social media. Talk about don't put your entire life out there because it will never go away. Don't ever put a picture of yourself online naked in any way, shape, or form, don't ever put yourself in a sexual way out there because it will never go away. I go back to what I said. There is no such thing as love. There's puppy love, but that puppy love goes away and people do very bad things with pictures that are online. So it only takes one bad decision. Please, please, Lauren, I'm gonna use her name. Please, Lauren, please just send me one picture. Just one picture, please, Lauren. And she's gullible enough to think she's she's in love and she sends a picture that's inappropriate you better believe that all of john griffin middle school and everybody else is going to see that picture of her so that bark nine dollars a month for bark and please drill that into your children don't ever put anything out online uh, ever. wow that was a great session thank you so much for joining us this evening for our throwback thursday Cumberland Family Academy session. Each week, we look forward to bringing you information and resources. So if you enjoyed watching tonight's session, be sure to visit our website at www.familyacademy.ccs.k12.nc.us. There, you will find additional sessions and information and even resources to help you help your child in school and in life. Thank you again for joining us. Oh,